Uh, I'm going to focus on the pitchfork bifurcation. And um, I want to talk about, we talked about the pitchfork bifurcation coming about in the case where a system has some kind of symmetry. And I want to talk about what happens if the system is like pretty much symmetric, but there's some slight imperfection in its symmetry. Um, how does the pitchfork bifurcation change in the case where the symmetry is broken? So we call that the case of symmetry breaking. So we're going to start with um, the normal case first, which is that we have a perfectly symmetric system. And um, my differential equation is x dot is equal to the purple function minus the brown function. Uh, here's the purple function. It's supposed to be completely symmetric, but it's hand drawn. So uh, as symmetric as I could manage it. And then here's the brown function. And um, there are three intersections, so we have three fixed points. I've marked them in blue, and I want to mark their stability. So to think about their stability, let's go out here. Um, the brown function is above the purple, so purple minus brown will be negative. So x dot is negative. That results in an arrow going this way, and I'm going to draw that arrow in. And that tells us that this will be stable. And since this is stable, we immediately know unstable, stable. And we're also able to draw in the rest of the arrows. OK, so I've drawn in all the arrows and the stability. And I'm going to actually um, make a matching bifurcation picture uh, over here. And our parameter is going to, be, um, going to be the slope of this line. And we're going to let the slope increase uh, towards towards infinity. Um, so this is, uh, I'm going to make a bifurcation diagram. And so we're looking at the stable points, uh, so not the stable points, the fixed points versus the parameter. And we're maybe at a value of the parameter that's over here. And we have these three fixed points. Uh, that one's unstable. Uh, that one's stable. And they are um, symmetric. They're symmetric. So here's the central one. And these two are symmetric about it, they're equidistant from it. And that symmetry is going to remain. These, this fixed point and this fixed point are always going to be equidistant from that one. So uh, let me ramp up the, um, the slope. Uh, I'm going to draw a slightly higher slope. Oh, it was supposed to go through the origin. We're working on that. OK, um, slightly higher slope. Uh, so this is a larger value of the parameter. And our fixed points have shifted a little. Uh, the symmetric ones are closer to the origin, and then the one at the origin uh, stays there. And then um, let's uh, make it even steeper. Uh, and we're still trying to go through the origin. Um, and it looks like basically uh, the three fixed points are virtually at the same place right now, but maybe they haven't quite collided yet. Um, and in a moment, they're going to collide. Um, and once they collide, oh, I'm sort of running out of colors. Once they collide, uh, we just have one fixed point. And um, the stability of that fixed point, we just know this from experience with bifurcations. The stability is going to change. But we can also reason that through. This is the brown function. The brown function is now above the purple function. Um, so purple minus Brown is uh, an inward arrow. Uh, so now, inward arrow, inward arrow, and it's a stable point at the origin. That's, that's our new situation. Um, and that's going to be our situation going onwards. And now I'm going to fill this in as a bifurcation diagram. Solid line, solid line, dashed line, uh, solid line. And... Uh, I want to think about us kind of moving backwards through this system. So what if we start at a relatively large slope and we're, we're along, we're, we're changing the slope, um, we're just dialing a knob ourselves. And so we've set the knob here and we wait for our system to equilibrate at this uh, stable fixed point that is attracting for the whole basin. Um, and then let's say we dial the knob a little and we land over here and uh, we have the same fixed point and so nothing really changes about how our system looks. We dial the knob a little more so that we're over here and again, uh, we're sitting at the same equilibrium. We dial the knob some more, we dial the knob some more, we dial the knob some more, we dial the knob some more. 
okay, uh, now we're here. We've dialed the knob to this point, uh, and we can't continue to sit this equilibrium because it's now unstable. So we're going to be pushed to one of these two directions, and it's not easy to predict which direction we're going to get it pushed to because that's going to depend on very minor details of the initial perturbation that we experience uh, that we're not necessarily going to be able to measure very easily. So we'll go in one of these two directions and we'll think of ourselves as going along one of these two directions with pretty much equal probability. So that's the case of perfect symmetry. Uh, it's a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. Now I want to look at the case where we've broken the symmetry. Um, how do we break the symmetry? Well, uh, this function got shifted up just a little bit. So uh, maybe there was a tiny mistake in our manufacturing and it no longer goes perfectly through the origin. Uh, and maybe I've exaggerated how much the symmetry is broken here so that we'll be able to see what happens. So maybe the symmetry was only broken by um, a very small epsilon. But here, it's a, I, I broke it by a relatively large amount so that we're going to be able to think it through. Um, okay, now that the symmetry is broken, our fixed points have moved. Uh, their stability relationships are the same. Uh, stable, unstable, stable. But uh, they're no longer symmetric uh, about the central one. Uh, they're now a bit asymmetric. So we're gonna draw um, we're gonna draw a new bifurcation diagram. Uh, the parameter we change is gonna be the same. We're gonna be rotating the line, and uh, these are fixed points. Okay, and now we're starting at this parameter, and um, this one is down here somewhere, let's say, and that one's up here, and this one's a bit away from the origin. Okay. And uh, we're going to uh, rotate our line again. That's changing our parameter. And we're always going to go through this intercept because the that intercept is the broken symmetry. We're no longer right at zero. We're shifted a little bit away from it. So what are our new fixed points? Uh, they've moved a little. Um, this one has moved up a pretty tiny amount. Um, this one has moved downward a bit substantially, and this one has also moved towards the origin quite a bit. Okay, and so now we're going to draw another line, and it uh, still needs to go through uh, this intercept. Okay, there we go. Um, and so the unstable point has moved up, and the upper stable point has moved towards it. Um, and then the lower stable point has, has also moved a bit. Um, and maybe you can see what's going to happen as we continue to rotate the line. As we continue to rotate the line, we're about to have these two fixed points, the stable and the unstable, we're about to have them collide in a saddle node bifurcation, while the bottom one is not going to go through a simultaneous bifurcation. Uh, so let's draw that in. Let's draw another line. Um... This line has been drawn in after that bifurcation happens. Uh, it rotated through this curvy bit and the fixed point's annihilated. Um, but this lower fixed point is still there, so I want to draw that. Uh, there it is. And um, these two annihilated somewhere back there. They're gone. Um, and then what happens is I continue to increase the slope. I'm going to draw one more line. Uh, and then yet one more line. Uh, as I increase the slope, um, the fixed point does actually, uh, this fixed point does approach uh, zero. So, okay, here's what happens with this fixed point. And then these fixed points look like that. So let's compare our symmetry broken case to the case where our symmetry was intact, which um, I'm drawing in. Okay, so in purple the is the case where the symmetry was intact, and in blue is the symmetry broken case. And you can see that in purple, okay, it's hard to see, but we have 
a supercritical pitchfork bifurcation. And in blue, we have a stable state that simply always exists, coupled uh, with a saddle node bifurcation where the two additional states are, are born. So we basically have a slight perturbation of this pitchfork bifurcation diagram where these two branches disconnect from uh, the lower branch. And uh, so imagine that we are setting our parameter again and we set the dial uh, to a value that would correspond with this fixed point and we maybe start out here and we zoom to this fixed point and then we rotate the dial and uh, we stay at this fixed point, we rotate the dial, uh, we're at this fixed point, we rotate the parameter dial, we're at this fixed point, we, uh, okay, the fixed points are looking very slightly different between the symmetric and the symmetry broken case. Uh, and then we rotate the dial, and uh, this was the point where if we were in the symmetric case, uh, we would have an arbitrary choice between the two branches. But we're in the symmetry broken case, which means that actually we're stuck on this stable state that already existed. And these two other states are being born up here, but um, we won't easily be able to access them without a very large perturbation. So here we are down here, and um, the dial changes, and we stay along this branch. And so if we didn't know that the symmetry had been broken, and we were just doing this experiment, we might have actually thought that we were in the symmetric case, because our observations of how, how our object moves uh, don't look so different between the two cases. It's just that if we were to repeat the experiment a hundred times, uh, in the symmetry broken case, we'd always be stuck on this bottom branch, while in the symmetric case, we would expect to pick the two branches with uh, similar probabilities. So, uh, so that's, that's the story. Um, the symmetry, the imposed symmetry created a pitchfork bifurcation, but even if we break that symmetry just a tiny bit, we lose our pitchfork bifurcation, and instead we end up with a saddle node bifurcation.